the Battle of China. This, the great city of Shanghai on a September day in 1937. This, the fearful beginning of a new kind of war. This, the first mass bombing from the air of a helpless civilian population. Why? Why are these innocent Chinese men, women, children to die beneath the hail of Japanese bombs? To find the answer to this question, we must first understand something about China and Japan. And to understand China, three facts must never be forgotten. China is history. China is land. China is people. Chinese history goes back for more than 4,000 years. That's a long time. It was only 168 years ago that Washington crossed the Delaware. Only 452 years have passed since Columbus discovered America. It's 1,500 years since the world saw the fall of the ancient Roman Empire. 3,400 years have gone by since Moses received the Ten Commandments. 3,700 years have passed since the pyramids were built. But more than 4,000 years ago, the Chinese Empire was already in existence. And more important, so was the Chinese civilization, a civilization of art and learning and peace. Yes, China is history. And China is also land, more land than the entire continent of Europe, a third larger than the United States, and rich in raw materials. This vast area consists of China proper and four outer provinces. To the north is Manchuria, huge and desolate, but abounding in raw materials. Next to Manchuria are Mongolia, and Xinjiang. Here lies the Gobi Desert, a vast plateau twice the size of Texas, inhabited by nomad tribes who lead their camel caravans back and forth over ancient trade routes. To the west is Tibet, the icy roof of the world, its borders encompassing the eastern end of the Himalayan mountains, the mystery land that few have entered. And from these vast mountains of the west rise the three great rivers. The northernmost of these is the Huang Ho, the Yellow River. Far to the south flows the Sikiang, the Pearl River, which enters the sea past the great ports of Canton and Hong Kong. But the greatest river of all is the one that flows between, the Yangtze, winding for 3,000 miles through the heart of China, bringing fertility to the good earth and bearing upon its broad waters half the commerce of China. Yes, China is land, next to Russia, the largest country in the world. But most important, China is people, 450 million of them. The whole population of China were to walk past you, four abreast, there would never be an end to the procession, for new Chinese would be born and would grow up before the last man could pass by. Of every five persons on the face of the earth, one is a Chinese. And since one-fifth of all the human beings in the world are Chinese, we should know what sort of people they are. Well, in all their 4,000 years of continuous history, they have never waged a war of conquest. They're that sort of people. They developed the art of printing from movable type. They invented the mariner's compass, without which no ocean could be crossed. They were among the first astronomers, and their observations of the stars and planets made possible the accurate measuring and recording of time. They are that sort of people. 
And why do we call our dishes China? Because the Chinese invented the art of making porcelain. And as we all know, they invented gunpowder, not as a weapon of war, but to celebrate their holidays and religious festivals. And it was one of China's great philosophers who, 500 years before the birth of Christ, gave mankind these words. What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. They are that sort of people, enriching the world in which we live. Yes, China is incredibly old, incredibly big, incredibly populous. Yet it was until recently a land with which few of us concerned ourselves. But now a great change has taken place. China is now our fighting ally, or more accurately, we are China's. For China has been fighting our enemy, Japan, for seven long years. Why is this? Why have the Chinese, who in all their 4,000 years of history had never waged an aggressive war, been forced to fight? To fight and die by the millions. Because China is land. Four million square miles of it. And because China is people. 450 million of them. And because Japan had a plan to use them both. That plan was finally stated in the Tanaka Memorial a blueprint for world conquest, formulated in 1927 by Baron Gishi Tanaka, the Japanese foreign minister. In order to conquer the world, we must first conquer China. Here was their mad dream. Phase one, the conquest of Manchuria for raw materials. Phase two, the absorption of China for manpower, piece by piece, so as not to arouse the rest of the world. Phase three, a triumphant sweep to the south to seize the riches of the Indies. Phase four, the eastward move to crush the United States. One fact was obvious. China was to be the giant back on which Japan would ride to world conquest, just as Russia was to be enslaved for German use. But how was it possible for Japan, only one twentieth the size of China, and with only one sixth its population, to think of conquering China, much less the world. There were two main reasons for this. In the first place, modern China, in spite of its age-old history, was like the broken pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, each piece controlled by a different ruler, each with his own private army. In modern terms, China was a country, but not yet a nation. While Japan was a united, well-knit, highly regimented military dictatorship,